no matter what you're going through, I know that you can stand for your life. Hallelujah, let's get to the word. Amen. I thought you might think I'm pastor, don't have a word, it's pulling time. <laughs> Amen, I do have a word. But let me tell you something. When it comes to bless, <laughs> beloved, you don't do things for the sake of it. When you bless, you take your time and let it be a blessing. Because this is a house of blessing. Amen. Can I hear that? Amen. Amen. How many of you have been blessed in this house? Amen. Okay, very some of you, but at least someone. I said, how many of you have been blessed? Amen. Tell you what, I'm going to come back and preach. Again, because you're blessed. Amen. Ray, how you doing? Sydney was rocking yesterday. Yeah. Yo, oh. hallelujah. Jess, Jess went for a big walk yesterday. <laughs> Leading all the pastors. Wow. Okay, turn with me to Ezra, the book of Ezra. I know you're looking where it is. Second, after Kings and Chronicles, Ezra. So you just come there and say Kings. You know we open to Kings so often, Chronicles. Then you're going to get to Ezra. Beloved, today I want to talk about a subject, and I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna provoke you. You know we're always blessing you, but this will also be a blessing in the end. But I wanna, I wanna get to you. I wanna get on the inside of you, because I need to awaken the giant of who God is in you and what God prepared for you. I want to awaken that sleeping giant. And I can I hear an amen. amen. So get ready this day. I'm going to talk about the reserved of God. It's called the reserve. The reserved of God. You know when you say something is reserved, it is special. Something reserved, that means it was pre-planned. You understand? Pre-ordinated, it was reserved because it is special. It is special. Amen. So you are the reserve of God. In Ezra, I'm going to read from chapter 1, 1 to 5, quickly. Let us go. Now in the first year of the city, uh, a first year of Cyrus king of Persia, the word of the Lord by mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia that he made a proclamation throughout the kingdom and put it also in writing saying, Thus saith Cyrus king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven had given me all the kingdoms of the earth and he had charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem which is in Judea. Verse 3, who is there amongst you of all his people? His God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem which is in Judea and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, where he goes, let the men of that place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Don't worry, I'm not taking up an offering. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all of them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of the Lord which is in Jerusalem. Now beloved this morning just to uh, I get you into this word but I want to start off here in Israel. The children of Israel we just read have been in captivity for a long time. They've been in exile. They've been taken away from their hometown of Jerusalem. And they're here, they've come and be in captivity in another area. They've been enslaved. They've become slaves in another area. And they were enslaved and in exile for 70 years. They were taken away from the hometown. According to God's divine planning, he caused Cyrus. Now 70 years just finishes. Now how many of you know what the word seven? Seven talks about completion. And God always works in sevens. He works in specific numbers. Uh, uh, because 
uh, uh, there, there's, there's a greasing for, for specific numbers. And seven appears a hell of a lot in the Bible. But 70 years, they were being perfected. Beloved, you know what? Sometimes the Lord will take us from a certain position and bring us in the wilderness. And we will think, hey, you know what? We lost it all. But you know what? God has been preparing him for the greatest next move Amen. that was going to happen. Amen. And God moved these people in exile. He took them out for 70 years. He took them to exile. But the day he made them to leave, if they stayed in their hometown in Jerusalem, they would have never had the gold and the silver and the treasure and the beast and whatever it is to build the house of the Lord and be blessed. And so what God does, God takes them away into captivity. He takes them to a foreign place and he prepares them in all the skills that is necessary. And when the day came, there was a divine, supernatural release of finances. Can you imagine how awesome that is? God supernaturally caused men, caused others to give them whatever they wanted to build the house of the Lord. Now I'm just giving you free of charge. These, these are not my things, but it is important for, for you to understand the whole realm. <coughs> now what happened is, in that particular moment, let me tell you, in every one of your life, and today for many of you, it's going to be that day. It's going to be a day of divine orchestration coming to a place of divine release. Where it comes to a place where it says Kairos, it is now. You're coming to a place that is now. Today there is a now. Today is a Kairos. Today is a day of release of many of you into the into the realms of the spirit that 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 that, that you have never entered into as yet. And so when they came to this Kairos, they came and fulfilled 70 years. The Lord God Almighty moved supernaturally over the new king Sadat. He had just been appointed king. And what does this king do? He suddenly makes an announcement, not only says it, he backs it in writing and he says, who is there amongst you, Israel? Who is amongst you this day that is willing to go back home and build that house of the Lord this day? Who is there is one who, there is one suddenly that the Lord is causing him to say, and you know what? This day it, it had to be God to make this declaration because this declaration was so big. The same declaration was so huge that it could never be done by man in a sense by man's will. Because watch this, when he came, he sent a message out to all those in exile. And he said, today you are free to go back home to build a house of the Lord thy God. Now let me tell you how big this is. There is thousands upon thousands of Jews now labor and slave suddenly you are telling them all oh, go all oh, go back to Jerusalem yeah. can you imagine the impact that they would suffer losing all the free labor yeah. I tell you what God in his time God in his time prepared many hearts to be ready to be released in this time and they were released and it was confirmed in writing. Beloved, this day. <coughs> the amazing thing is, what's the sin? The amazing what God is doing, and I, 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 I pray and I feel it, it's going to happen back in the church. It's going to happen in the days to come. What's the sin? The heat. These are the ones that come. The kings. He says what? He goes even further. And he empowers them with the greatest gift of treasures, of gold and silver. He said, take, take and go and finish the house of the Lord. Build the work of the Lord your God. Beloved, 
Now let's get to the word. Let's leave the introduction, verse 3. And that's where I'm starting to focus now. Who is there amongst you this day in Christ's kingdom ministries? Who can build? Let him arise at once. Stop building. Firing people, people without names. That means when I say people without names, they have a name, but where the names were not mentioned, people without title to do a great work, and there suddenly an entire nation, entire army of nameless people. That has been prepared over the 70 years of exile. Being prepared by God Himself for a time such as this, with a divine mandate that you will go and build and you will go and establish my house. Verse 5 the Bible says, Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites. Watch this here. The priesthood arose. All the priesthood arose of the Levites and Benjamin. But I say to you, equally with the priests, equally when he's appointed, equally with those who sit in the red kings, was all of them whose spirit God had raised to go and build. Are you getting this? That means equally with the priesthood, equally with the senior appointed leader, there was the people who God has prepared, who God has prepared to help the priesthood, to help the priesthood to build the house of the Lord. And then they get it. By the way, if you're, if you're not catching it, I'm talking, I'm talking about you today. Talk about you today. Who are all of them? Who are all of them? Whose spirit has been raised and quickened by God to go and prepare. The scripture re records, it says, with all of them, that means the unnamed ones. Beloved, I'll tell you what. I don't know. You know what? The, the, the thing is, I know many names, but I'm back up with names. I know all our leaders, but sometimes I've got to think twice about the name. I'm serious. You understand? And, and, and yesterday was just an awesome thing. I don't know all the names, but I saw the t-shirt. Christ Kingdom Minister said, yo, 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 look at that. Names that I never know, but we were doing a mandate. They were serving in the kingdom of God. They were working together as a family to see the kingdom of God advance upon the face of the earth. Nameless, without titles. Yeah. But doing great things that will be recorded in the heavens, yeah. that will be rewarded in the heavens. By the way, they are known in the heavens. I pray that's a place for you. <laughs> These are the ones are named. They uh, and they go with a, a back to the mandate. The ones who God inspired, the ones who have skill, the ones who God has prepared for a time such as this to build the house of the Lord. To assist the priesthood to fulfill purpose. You know, many a times the church focuses on a few. But let me tell you something God has got a nation. God has got a nation. God is more weighty. And you are the more. You are the more. You are the more. When He began to speak and He said, Who is amongst you? You know how many people move. If you're going to read in 2nd uh, 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 Ezra, 64, 65, 50,237 moves together. <laughs> the question to this congregation is, this morning, who is, who is there amongst you this morning? Of all the people that is here, who is ready? Who is willing to build the house of the Lord? Who is ready to 
advance the kingdom of God upon the earth? Who amongst you is ready to serve? Who amongst you is ready to take your positions? Is there any amongst you here whose spirit God has raised? Whose spirit God has prepared for a time such as this? Whom God has prepared to arise and fulfill purpose to advance his kingdom of God upon the earth. Beloved, I want to tell you something, the success of the church, the success of the kingdom of God advancing upon the earth, that success has been placed not only on the priesthood, but has been placed on the reserved. Amen. It has been placed on the church upon his chosen. The burden of the Lord is not upon the priesthood alone. The burden upon the Lord is upon all people for building the house of the Lord and advancing the kingdom of God upon the earth. The burden of the Lord is upon everyone, 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 everyone. The burden of the Lord is upon everyone. Yeah. Beloved, it is your time to act now. How many of you have been inspired by God? Amen. Those who are prepared to act now. Beloved, this church must enlarge and move quickly. Amen. You know what? The coming of the Lord is now. Amen. And why also the dead angel is coming for some of us? Amen. Let's do it while we can. Because tomorrow we bury you and you will be with the Lord. I'm serious. As long as you declare Jesus Christ, the Lord is cool, you're going to be in heaven. But I tell you what, the eternity is forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It's forever and ever and ever, but what you do here determines your eternity. The Lord says, I've prepared you. I spoke to you in dreams and visions. I spoke to you to my prophetic voice. I spoke to you to my prophets. I spoke to you to my apostles. I spoke to you to my pastor in the church. I spoke to you to every, to, in everything. But you never move. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You know what it is? I like chicken curry, fresh chicken curry. The ones from Pochepston. The ones that are fat, you know, they, they, they taste so good because they eat so good, you know. That's why I'm not eating chick from Shep, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? You have a pot of chicken curry. I don't know what you cook, chicken or mutton. What's the thing? But imagine that you got the best. You, by the way, this hotel may can cook. And then I taste nothing to eat. I don't believe in prophecy. I don't believe in prophecy. I want reality. I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. Don't prophesy to me. I don't believe. But what's the simple thing? You have the best pot of mutton curry in you. And you walk around with an aroma. Because when you, how many of you know when there's a wind blowing and keeps the windows open? Because yeah. I know when I'm coming home sometimes, I just know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. My wife is a good cook, we're blessed. Why right I'm, I'm just blessed. Yeah. But imagine you walk around with that anointing. Yeah. There's an anointing. And then you can smell. Yeah. Yeah. Is the glory of the Lord inside of you. Given by God pre thing and purpose when he saw you, when he saw you, he said, this is what you're going to have. These ingredients I'm putting inside of you that you will feed the nation. Amen. That you will bless the people. You will bless the congregation. Amen. But you know what? Every now and again you lift the flap and close it. That's all. <laughs> when the naughty hits in the church and the flap comes, you can smell it, but no one is chowing. <laughs> Same word I'm trying to I'm trying to get. You are the reserve of the Lord. Amen. The hour has come. Amen. And some of you is passing time. The hour has come. But we're not acting. Beloved, God has initiated your calling. That's how much it is. Yahweh, the great creator, almighty God, initiated your calling. He created you for a time such as this. 
And the problem is you need to choose. Because you didn't make robots. You need to choose to respond. The priesthood needs help. How many of you know about the within our helpers? Would the crusade be successful yesterday? Where was the reserve of the Lord? When everything was happening. Where was the reserve of the Lord? And we say there's an anointing and the gracing upon us. Beloved, you never know. You could have been the one, even if you were there, who fed one kid. And that kid will remember your face forever and bless you forever and rise up the greatest evangelist the world has ever seen. And you would have made the difference. But you know what? You have kept the anointing away. You have kept it reserved for yourself. But the anointing was reserved unto God. The anointing is reserved unto God for His time and when, when He wants it. Hallelujah. Beloved, I say to you this day, the time the church needs help, the time is now. The priesthood needs help, the time is now. Beloved, never miss the opportunity. Never miss the opportunity. Never miss the opportunity to be a blessing. I want to say this and I'm saying that with love. Beloved, we can have 24, 7, 365 days a year where you're busy and it's all about you. Which day will you find in your heart? Which day will you find in your heart when it's not about you, but it is about Yahweh? It is about Jesus. Which day would you say, today is my birthday, but this crusade is there. I want to be there. I'll sacrifice and I'll party late or tomorrow. Which day you will say, I will make a sacrifice because there are no in me to be a blessing. I need to be a blessing. Yeah. We let year go after year, month after month, month after month. It is all about us. Nothing for the kingdom of God to advance the kingdom of God. Yet God, yet God created you. Yet God is dependent on you. Yet, you know what the Bible says? He says, He said, I, God is, this is now breaking. Yahweh is breaking. He said, listen to me. I have reserved for myself. I have reserved for myself people. That means when others are feeling I've got for you. Also I'm going to say to you this day. I'm just getting started. Also I'm going to say to you this day. Beloved, you don't act. He's got someone else to take your place. Amen. You quit. He's got someone else to take your place. Yeah. He will never let his church suffer. Yeah. If, my God, don't get involved in politics. Yeah. Who's right, who's wrong, who's this, who's that, who's that, who's that. My God, this book, this house, and all across the earth, he will protect. Yeah. So I say to you this day, beloved, we can't say we were hurt in the past. Not yet now. You will stand before him in judgment day and say, you know what the church did? He said, he, he just said, do you see what happened to me? Have you ever entered in your heart and mind what they did to me? And he said, even for that I died for, so why could you forgive me? Even for that I died. Even for that I forgave now, why are you not forgiving me? Breaking every excuse for the greatest launching of birth this year. It's a year of birth. You understand? I tell you what. I tell you what. Some of you may be saying, "Hey, Pastor, who are you?" I tell you what. Let me tell you something. You will rise to be a champion of God. Amen. The greatest players upon the earth was there to be shaken and be brought. You understand? The greatest boxes they were found where they were found dropping. They were found in the clubs, and somebody came and recognized. Today, I say to you, He has appointed me to tell you, I recognize you are the reserve. You are the champion of God. Come, let us train together. Come, let us play together. Come, let us serve together. Amen. Hallelujah. In 1 Kings chapter 19. I'm going to push a little bit now. In 1 Kings chapter 19, we read about Elijah. Now, Elijah has just done great, uh, 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 great exploits for Yahweh. I'm not going to go to that now. He's done. You can, uh, everyone knows this is a mighty man, a mighty prophet of God. This Elijah, he's done great, great things. But the Bible 
See, and some of them was in the chapter before, which is uh, uh, chapter 18, you will read that he had just slain 400 prophets of Baal. There's a prophet here, yes, you know what I mean? Destroyed, he destroyed an entire nation of these wicked prophets. The Bible says he prays for rain and the rain comes. And the Bible says when the rain came and before the floods came, the Bible says when he, he outran the horses of Ahab to go to Jezreel. Uh, uh, Jezreel. He, he outran horses to get there. And I just said this morning, those of you who are punting on horses, when you punt on the horses, you lose. But if you punt on the prophets of God, you, they will outrun your horses and we will win. The blessing of the Lord will come. God also, that horse is still running. July handicapped. That's why you call it handicap. You will always be handicapped. You never know. You never know why it's a handicap. You will be handicapped. You will be handicapped. You rather bless us as a prophet. The blessing will come back to you. Wonderful. Come on, can I hear? Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you are handicapped. Come on. Yeah. I read, I remember when I was a kid, there was a horse called In Full Flight. In Full Flight. Wait, oh no, make what full flight? Everyone got category in full flight. He never fly nowhere. Hallelujah. Come on, man. Alright, listen to this here. <coughs> Where was that? Uh, uh, help me, Lord. Yeah. Now watch this here. It came to a place where the men did great things. Alright. But suddenly there was a person called a Jezebel who came about and wanted to kill him. There's a mighty prophet with all this great thing he ran for his life. And he ran to a place called Bathsheba. And that's when he began to moan and groan. Let me read from verse 9. And that is 1 Kings 19, verse 9. <clears throat> and he came to the, unto a cave and he lodged there and behold the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And why the anointing is here? Yesterday when the biggest, first evangelistic crusade was happening in Sydney. Didn't you hear the word of the Lord when you're watching TV and shopping? He said, What are you doing here, CK? Oh, you guys didn't hear that. What you doing there? When he's happening here, yeah, what, what are you doing here, yeah, Elijah? Yo, hallelujah. And he said, go forth. Oh yeah, and he said, I, I've been very jealous for the Lord, God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown thine on altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left Amen. and seek, and they seek my life to take it. Beloved, the first thing he says to Elijah, what you bring here? <coughs> what it means, beloved, God has placed you into a position, stay there. Don't run from nothing. Don't run, don't quit, stay there. Because he's strengthened you, anointed you. You know when there's anointing, you'll step. Yeah. Don't let the external to get you. You step, you step, you step. Verses 10. You put that up there. Verses 10 and verse 14 says, His reply was, The people have forsaken me and slain your prophets, and I even am the only one left. And the Lord responds to him in verse 18. The Lord said, Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto God, and every mouth would have never kissed him. It's also recorded in Romans 11, 4 and 5. He said, I have reserved 7,000 people. He said, Elijah, you think you are the only one. You think you're the only one, but I have got 7,000 waiting to take your place. Now 7,000 is just a, a symbolic number. It could be many thousands. You understand? God uses certain figures. But why like 7,000? That means it is specific. When you use the word, he said, I have 7,000. That means if you do a study, it means I have, I have chosen a specific 
number. I ordained a specific number. I have anointed a specific number. And I say in this church, there is a number. There is an ordination in this house. There is a chosen in this house that God is waiting, that he prepared, that he prepared for this hour. To uphold the hand of the priesthood. And if the priesthood should fail, you are ready to carry through. Beloved, I say to you this day. The Lord God has by his grace kept for himself people that are, that are in wait to act on his behalf. Today, there's no more waiting. In this hour, I've come for release. There's no more waiting for tomorrow. I say to you that some of you are waiting to get perfect. And, and, and that is good. But you'll wait till Jesus comes. That's only when you'll be perfect. You want to act, now you act. You want to get closer to God. You, you can't get close to God unless you serve Him. You pray at home and all those things, but when you start touching the things that are holy, you participate in the church, you serve in the church. You know one of the greatest things that people play, I was telling, uh, Pastor, talking to Pastor Arvin, that for instance the crusade yesterday, you don't need people to do anything. All you need to be present. And it makes a difference. How many of you know your presence here makes a difference? You have done well. You have done well in your faithfulness. But I want to say to you, beloved, I want to say to you, beloved, we step here one more. God has known. Amen. There's an anointing in you that needs to be discovered. Amen. There's a power in you that needs to be discovered. There's a glory in you. Some of you, you the trouble is you look down on yourself. When you can, you can, listen to me. Your past got nothing to do with what he plans to do now. Amen. You need to understand that. There's no condemnation. The past is over. There's a glory that is within you must be seen. Amen. You know, if there's full participation in the church, I'll tell you what, sure. Will become unstoppable. Amen. Elijah was mistaken, he was the only one. God says, Listen here, my friend. Listen, my friend, take it easy. I don't think you're the only one. I've got so much more. And one of the things, uh, 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 this thing reminds me is Elijah was amongst all the people. But he, he, his eyes were open to the greatest spiritual dimensions. But his eyes was not open to the anointing upon the people's lives. He could not discern the children of God that were waiting. And I say to you, you know, many times we leaders, when I say we leaders, I'm not just talking particularly about me because I don't operate in that domain, but I represent leadership. The leadership many times see the beam in your eye, and we don't see the beam in our eye. We're always looking for a thing. And I say to you, this day is shit. Today is changing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what? There's a church within the church. There's a hidden church within the church. There's a holy remnant. There's a reserve of God. God says, I have left for myself 7,000. That's why I got the word. I have reserved for myself 7,000. But it's, it's hundreds of thousands now. I say there's a holy remnant who he has prepared and the church is being revealed in this hour now to serve without a title but as the elect but as the chosen and the reserved of God the Lord's invincible, invisible church must become visible the unknowns who are amongst us are carriers of great anointing you know I watched many people serving yesterday and throughout the, in the conferences and stuff. But you know when I look at them, when I say there's no big title, but they carry such an anointing and such an authority in their service in that position that the heavens will record your blessing. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Don't stress about us who call me pastor. The pastor comes with trouble. It comes with responsibility. It comes with the thing that I'm going to answer God for. Every boo that we make. Sometimes it's best to have no title and do the work of the Lord. Yeah, everyone thinks this job is fancy. But let me tell you something. We are the ones that don't sleep at night. 
We are the ones that carry the burden. We have to carry the problems of hundreds and thousands of people, especially when you're united in Christ and dealing with so many things. It is not easy. And it's not easy if they don't like you, that's even worse. Elijah declared, I'm the only one. It's not. Let me tell you something. The men of God want to step down. You can step down, but God will raise up somebody suddenly. Amen. And then when you wake up tomorrow and say, oh, I missed it. You missed it. Because let me tell you something. It's hard to come back. Hallelujah. Now let's just go this. God is saying to the priesthood, and that's who we are. We are the priesthood. Stand up as a Roman. This is Frankenstein. But only I can call him Frankenstein. Pastor Ruben Frank. Stand up, uh, Pastor Reed. Prophet Clyde. We're the priest of the house. We have many uh, 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 leaders that's part of the priest. Let me tell you something. This day, the Lord is telling us as a priest to anoint and release. Because the priesthood, the, the moment Elijah had a had the problem, the Lord says, come here, Elijah. I want you to anoint all these men. I want you to anoint them. From Jim to all these guys, I want you to anoint them. To Elisha, I want them, I want you to anoint them to help you. So that you don't tell me you're the only one. Anoint them, they will help you. And he says, watch this here. When we anoint them, we're going to anoint many. He says, watch this here. They, they're going to anoint this one. In this one, he is anointed, gifted, when he's battling. And where? He's failing, don't worry. The other one will cover up for him. And when this one is failing, don't worry. Because we've got so many, this one will cover up for him. And when this one is falling short, don't worry. This one will cover up for him. Amen. We're going to anoint you so there will be a way upon way upon way will continue to release till the coming of Jesus Christ that the kingdom of God will not suffer violence. You may take your seat. I say to you today, I say you are, maybe you don't know these words, but you are reserved of the Lord. Amen. You are reserved of the Lord. I'm going to go into all that in 1 Kings 19, 15 to 17. We're skipping all those things there. Beloved, lastly, where are the witnesses? The Bible talks about witnesses in King, in Acts 10, 42 to 40, 40 to 42. God raised him up, that's Jesus, to life on the third day and caused him to be plainly seen. The Bible says, not all the people, but to witnesses who were chosen and designated, this is amplified, beforehand by God. To us who ate and drank together with him after he rose from the dead. What it says, not everyone saw him when he rose from the dead. But those witnesses who were chosen and designated beforehand, he commanded to preach the word of the Lord. When Jesus rose from the dead, not, only, not everyone saw him, but witnesses. And now you do the study and you go from Luke 24 to Acts chapter 1. We skip all that. If you do a study, there was a whole lot of names that were not mentioned. Okay, we know the 11 disciples were there. There were 12, but one missed it. Can you understand? One missed it. He wanted he had a connection somewhere else. No one, Jesus, he missed it. So the 11 disciples, we know them. Then we know Mary Magdalene. We know Mary, uh, 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 the mother of Jesus. We know probably Jesus' brother. But what about all the other witnesses? Let me tell you something. All the other witnesses came under the global, uh, I'm going to explain corporate anointing, came under corporate anointing, you understand, to go forth and minister. These guys were senior, but yet the other guys, other witnesses, recorded in the heavens of everything they have done. We will see them when we get there. They probably did even greater exploits than some of uh, 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 the seniors, can you understand? But they were part of the anointing. They were witnesses chosen to see Jesus the second come. He didn't allow everyone. 
He didn't allow everyone. But today what he says, he only allowed those who were chosen. But in this move, Calvin, in this move, all the witnesses here are chosen. For you are the chosen generation. Amen. Are you understanding? Every one of you is chosen. Tell your neighbor you're chosen. chosen. Yeah. Tell them you're chosen. <clears throat> you see, I know that some husband telling you the mistake. <laughs> well, you know, I, if I tell you you're chosen, I can see what you're I can hear it. I can hear it. <laughs> Beloved, no one needs a title. Amen. No one needs a title to work. You are yourself with God. Amen. You know, the greatest way, I'm going to say this, and I really come to a conclusion, skips a bus. As a testimony, let me tell you something. Me, I was not worthy to be even a cleaner in the church. Can you understand? But let me tell you something. When, when I have, you know when the Holy Ghost touches you, there isn't anything to date that happened in the church. I'm talking about where I previously served. Whether it was cutting the grass, whether it was painting, whether it was fixing the church, whether it was a crusade, you name anything and all things, whether it was feeding, there was one guy always present, and this hand is up. I was the number one to serve God. And even if God didn't purpose for me to be a servant of God, he must have said, yo, this one here, I better help him. I better bless him. Felt sorry for me and not to be said, all right, come on. Sir, I, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, it's all about touching the things of God. And then see what God does for you. In conclusion, somebody say amen. Amen. Now serious in conclusion. Pastors, this morning, I have a few questions. In summary of what I said this morning, and it's a repeat. The question number one is, and listen to this cover. Who is there among you of all the people who can help? Take every word from the Bible. Number two, who amongst you has the spirit of God raised. The Spirit of God empowered to serve in the house of the Lord. And the house of the Lord means not only in this within the walls, it means outside the walls as well. <coughs> Who amongst you can say, I am one of the thousands? whom God has reserved for this season to take up a position that needs help and assistance. Who amongst you are witnesses who were chosen to testify about Jesus and to preach to all people? Number five, are you the ones who God kept in wait to act on his behalf? Yeah. If it is you, then rise up. Take your position. Rise up and serve. Don't wait for the anointing because you're already anointed. Don't wait for anything because you're already empowered. When the witnesses went forth, when the witnesses went forth, if God has appointed you, is 100% behind you. Can I hear an amen, son? And so now I ask of you this day, hallelujah. Amen. See, service. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Beloved, you're never too big to serve. Yes. And too anointed to serve. That's what the kingdom of God. Jesus, he's, he's, he's God. He was cooking a child for the people. Trying to fish early morning for them to eat. Come on. Amen. The only thing my former needs to teach me how to fry. 
I'm not Jesus, so I don't cry. I'm not Jesus, so I don't cry. They say, oh, if Jesus can cry, why not cry? I'm not Jesus. How many of you here today? Do that. It's in your heart. In fact, let me go and stand up. Keep all past the How many in your heart, right? They can say, I know there's many leaders, but even some male leaders get cold. But how many today, I want you to, that you know in your heart, you heard the word, I am one of the reserved. That means I am chosen. I'm one of the chosen. All God said today, what's this? When, when Elijah said there's no one left, what's the word? God told him to go and anoint and release that you will have enough. We are here today. This word was never to condemn, but it was here to work to release and open up that blessing within you. Today, as the priest, we want to anoint, we want to release that the prophetic word for 2019, the year of fruitfulness and the year of birthing, will become a reality. How many, I don't want anyone to close their eyes now, because this is, this is a big stuff. How many of you now, in your heart, you know today, you heard the word, and it is you. That means you are ready. That means in the, in, in the anointed time of God, you know, I've wasted so many years, but this year is my year to serve, to do something for the Lord. It is you right now. I want you to raise your hand. Say it is me. It is me. Father, we just thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord God, as your people, Lord God, have come forth, Lord God. Lord, I thank you this day for your anointing that has been placed upon them. Thank you, Lord God, for the divine skills yes. and the talents that you have placed in them, O oh God. Yes. As your word says, what do you have in your hand? Yes. And Father God, you have placed the anointing upon them. Jesus. And Lord, even as your word says in, in, in Nehemiah, O oh God, this day. Lord, we pray, O oh God, the spirit of Nehemiah, yes. that they will rise up. Yes. They will rise up and bear through yes. the kingdom of God. Lord, we speak fruit, O 
God. Proof that you're the rise of God as they put their hands to the plow. So we thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Let's take it on a little bit more prayer. Amen. Those that have, have been anointed, just look at me for one minute. I'm just reminded of something right now. About five or seven years ago, I was in my car going to preach for Prophet Bernard in the North Coast. And as I was going, the Lord said to me, cancel that service and go to this meeting in a tent. So this was about five or seven years ago. And in this tent, they had an anointing service. And as I was standing in the queue, Pastor Ruben pulled me and he put me in front of this man in the queue. And he said, I anoint you in the service of God. I anoint you to prophesy. I anoint you to bring souls to the kingdom in signs, wonders, and miracles. This anointing upon you is a life-changing moment this morning. Father, I declare upon your people that this is a life-changing moment. That their lives will not be the same after this morning. Holy Ghost, that you will stir up in them. Stir up in them. That the word says, what worthy of your calling. Realized upon them, let them walk out the door knowing the blessing of the Lord is upon them as they serve. The anointing will be stirred up and it's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. But they will walk into the place and the demons will know that these are men and women of Christ's kingdom ministries. When they walk and speak, bones will come together, healing will take place. And today we bless these men and women. We bless their family. We bless their household. They will not, they will not, they will not want for anything in 2019. Because they shift over them in the atmosphere. That the land of Jacob, that the portal of heaven opened over their family. And that the ring of fire is around them, protecting their every move. Today I declare a life changing anointing about them in the name of Jesus by the blood of the Lamb we sanctify you the ring of fire in Jesus name Hallelujah. Hallelujah. take ownership take ownership that the church of God will be blessed and so this morning we thank you for your insert we thank you for the ones whom you are chosen witness that you kept for yourself for this hour and this season. Lord, I give you praise. Thank you for the release in this hour. For Father, the, the multitude you're releasing now for the service, I dedicate praise back to my God. And so this morning, I release the blessing upon each one, the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I release the blessing of the blood upon you, your home, your family, your business, your job, everything you own and have. And I declare no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue raised against you in judgment, we condemn and bring to no effect. May you find much favor this week. May you progress this week. May you prosper this week. May the Lord open up the gates within your spirit of every anointing and gracing. May, may, you, may you accept may you accept, may whatever you touch be blessed this day I, I, I thank you right now the peace of God, the peace of God, the favor of God be upon you now, in Jesus mighty name, amen and amen shake hands on somebody God bless you, we we'll see you on Tuesday night